Welcome to Kotlin Bytes. Have you ever made an Android app? Well, in this video, I'm gonna walk you through creating a simple tic-tac-toe game. Let's get started. This tutorial is not for an early beginner in coding. Feel free to follow along, but be warned that we're gonna cover a lot during this short series. Each episode will focus on a particular topic that will sequentially build off each other. I'm sure I'll skim over some details that you may not fully understand. If that's the case, please leave a comment below and I'll either respond directly or create another video answering the topic if it warrants one. Alrighty, let's get to it. Make sure to download Android Studio. It's fundamentally the same as IntelliJ IDEA, which is what I typically use for this channel, but with extra tools to accelerate Android development. I'll leave a link in the description. Start by creating a new project then select the empty activity template. This will set up the project with one primary screen for us to begin. Choose a name and a package. Ideally, the package name should be your website domain in reverse with the application name or identifier placed last. Ultimately, you want the package name to be specific to your app. I would recommend using API 26 or above. If you need to support nearly the entire Android market, don't pick an API below 21. Below that, you'll run into some significant compatibility issues. Here's our main activity. We'll get to it in the next episode. Today, we want to focus on the layout. Unfortunately, this means little to no Kotlin this episode since the layout is in XML. Well, at least for now, they are working on Jetpack Compose, which promises to bring cleaner layouts defined entirely with Kotlin. However, until then, we are stuck with XML. Before we jump into the XML, let's select our assets. Jump over to the Resource Manager. You'll likely find it on the left panel, but if you don't, double tap Shift and type Resource Manager. We'll need to import some icons for this app. I like to use a website called Material Design Icons. There is a decent selection and they're all open source. I'll select a circle and then export the vector code directly. Let's go back to Android Studio. I can add a new resource file I'm going to call it IC underscore circle for icon circle. The root element will be a vector and the directory name will be drawable. Then paste the vector code here. Navigate back to the project tab and you'll notice that the circle icon appears under the drawable folder. Copy and paste this icon to create a new one for the star. I know tic-tac-toe typically uses circles and X's, however I figured I would mix it up a bit. Follow the same process to add this icon. And finally, the empty space icon. XML time. I typically develop with the preview on one side and I lay out all the elements in code. The visual editor is actually quite robust However, I find more control in doing it manually. Remove the default text view, then add an image view. Since we're gonna be using a constraint layout, we'll be pinning our elements relative to each other and the parent window. For example, I found it better to keep the width and height of these grid items at zero. Instead, I will use the constraint width percent property to set this to a quarter of the screen width. I can then force this view to be a square using the dimension ratio property. I want to center this view. To do so, I'll pin it to all edges, causing it to float to the center since we've constrained its size. I'll use this view as a reference for the remaining eight cells. I'll number them zero through eight. Therefore, this cell will be cell four. I'll assign it an ID of cell underscore four. Finally, I'll set the circle to it temporarily. Copy and paste this view and remove its constraints. We're gonna add more constraints to it. Notice we wanna pin it to the center cells top left. Continue at this process for all nine cells. Since we're not overlapping these views, the order doesn't really matter all that much. Therefore, I will place cell four in between cells three and five for cleanliness. Notice Android Studio is asking us for a content description to be applied to these images. Although it's optional, more or less, it's recommended for accessibility. So let's navigate to our strings file and create a simple image description. 
select cell. That should be okay. Then apply this to all the images. We're going to use the frame layout for the grid lines. So add a frame layout and set its width to zero, the height to one, and the background to black. We'll pin the view to the outer edges of cells zero and two while placing it directly above cell four. We can then copy and repeat this process for the other three lines using a similar method to finish the board's grid lines. Next, we want to create a reset button. Add the label to our strings file, and then center this view between the bottom of our screen and cell seven. Finally, add a game status text view to our layout hierarchy. Set in the background to this built-in Android color background property will help us later on. Play around with the font size and padding until the layout looks all right. I also added a bit of transparency with the alpha property to indicate a that this message is overlaid on the board. Now it's time to test it out with the emulator. Open up the Android Virtual Device Manager and launch a virtual machine. If you don't already have one listed here, you can create one with the button at the bottom. At the top, press the play button once you have your device target set to the emulator. It could also easily be a real device if you have one plugged in. Okay, it's gonna build and there we go. Our layout is rendering correctly. Our game status message is not appearing here because we're using the text tools. The text tool properties only appear when you're using the layout editor. In a later episode, we're gonna add the text programmatically to this view. That is it for this episode of Kotlin Bytes. Stay tuned for the next episode in this series explaining how to bind these views with Kotlin. However, until then, thanks for watching. If you like what you see, please like and consider subscribing. The source code and additional resources are, of course, in the description below. If there's anything else you'd like me to explain in a later video, please message me or leave a comment. Otherwise, have a great day.